Hello my darlings, it's Zoe here and today I give you another Zhongli story. As you know, Zhongli is currently in the rerun in Genshin Impact, which means if you haven't played Genshin Impact yet, now is the best time to start it, so that you can immediately wish for one of the best characters in the game. So why don't you do it? But before we go right into it, but before you go download the game, why don't you watch this video? And please do so until the end of it. Like or dislike the video and comment something down below. This way you help me with the YouTube algorithm so more people can see my videos and enjoy them just as much as you probably do. And if you're new here and somehow YouTube actually recommended my video to you, hi, I hope I'm worth subscribing. Uh, lastly, uh, if you could share the video, I would be internally grateful to you. Fan art and, well, I'm officially allowing it. Uh, you can clip parts of my videos and upload them on TikTok as long as the, your link to my stuff is always appreciated. Again, any help helps. And if you draw fan art, I have a Discord. Post your fan art right there as well so I can immediately react to it. Now, let's get right into the show, shall we? The Wansheng Funeral Parlor was a place many people in Liyue avoided, like the plague. Working in this business was considered bad luck, and dealing with the dead was frowned upon. That's why the parlor was hidden in the deepest corners of the city of contracts, and most interactions happened with letters. The handful of people who did work there were considered outsiders, or at the very least, weird. In the case of its director, both seemed to be the case. Since she was mostly absent, spending time with a strange traveler, leaving you, her secretary, as really the only person running the place, even though you were employed simply to take care of the numbers. Today your face was buried behind your hands. It didn't look good. One of the employees, Mr. Zhong Li, had spent an exorbitant amount of money for the funeral of an old noble, blowing up the budget given by the deceased's family by a huge margin. You hated telling the man to stop. And you hated telling him whenever he made a mistake. After all, you were guilty of the sin of being attracted to your co-worker. Outside of his spending habits, he was unbelievably mature. But he threw money around like he was the one producing it, and therefore had endless amounts of it as well. You needed to scold him. With shivering hands, you clutched your geovision. The stone had appeared in your palm after you had first entered the funeral parlor to incline for an internship, as it had been the only place hiring at the time. You had taken it as a sign of good fortune, and accepted immediately when the director Hu Tao offered you a full employment. With shaking legs you walked outside the building. It was an early evening. The sun was still bright, and the streets were bustling with people. In truth, you hated that. You preferred to be alone. Taking a guess as to where to find your co-worker, you marched towards the third round knockout. Despite the tavern being known for its alcohol, Zhang Li could be found there on almost a daily basis, enjoying the herbal tea they offered there for a low price. As expected, Zhong Li was sitting alone at one of the tables, cup in hand. As expected, the tall man was sitting alone at one of the tables, cup in hand. The closer you got to him, however, the more your legs felt like jelly. And when he finally noticed your approach, he smiled gently. Why did it have to be him? Ah, what a pleasant surprise, he said once you were in earshot. 
Zhang Li gestured for you to sit. I did not expect company. I would have ordered some tea for you too. <sighs> you blushed. Wait, why did you come here again? By now Zhong Li had arranged for you to get your own tea. Flustered and with a heavily beating heart, you sat there, unable to think. So, what brings me the honor? He said in that deep, comforting voice. Honestly, uh, I forgot. He exhaled with an amused tone. Hmm. If you have forgotten it, that just means it must have not been important. You nodded and took a sip of your tea. It was a bit bitter and sour. Zhongli smirked upon seeing your grimace. I believe you have forgotten to add sugar, my dear. He leaned forward and opened a small box that sat in the middle of the table. It was filled with sugar cubes. A frustrated mumble left your lips as you took three of the tiny cubes and threw them into your cup. What frustrated you more was that you knew he drank his tea without it. Are you planning on doing anything today? You somehow managed to croak out. Zhongli went deep into thought. When time allows it, I tend to enjoy a walk through the city. It is somehow very calming to me. Hmm. Just when did this feeling begin? He was quiet for a moment before saying, Oh, I do apologize if I may bore you. You shook your head. No, uh, no, I'm, I'm fine. He tilted his head and gave you a warm smile. Would you like to accompany me, then? You squeaked and he raised an eyebrow. He was about to ask you if something was wrong, when you quickly interjected. Oh, of course! After tea time was over, and you paid, you slowly trotted with your tall co-worker through Lewe. It was summer, and a mild breeze came from the Dragonspine Mountains, providing a mild coolness just enough to not break out in a sweat from merely walking. Honestly, you were glad for that. Anxious as you were, it was a blessing that you weren't a sweaty mess right now. You glanced over at Zhong Li. He was looking up to your right at Feihun slope, while a pleased smile decorated his lips. What is your favorite place in Liyue, if I may ask? He said, and his eyes suddenly met yours. Resisting the urge to jump and say something awkward like whatever your favorite place is, followed by a giggle, you somehow managed to keep your composure. Uh, honestly? You took a moment to breathe. The old waypoint in the uh, outskirts of the harbor. You can see the entire city from there. He chuckled quietly. <laughs> Excellent choice. You blushed at the compliment. Then why don't we make it our destination for a little excursion? Sh sure was all you said. An hour later, the two of you reached the entrance of Liwa Harbor, and you gulped after setting the first step outside of the city. I'm safe with you, right? The man chuckled. <clears throat> I'm fairly certain we will not encounter any hilly trolls, but even if you are safe with me. Hearing him say that, you instinctively attached yourself to his arm, hugging it like it was a lifeline. And despite his initial surprise, he accepted it. In fact, he liked it. He had kept it to himself, but Zhang Li had feelings for you too, from the moment he had laid eyes upon you. It was this need to protect you, 
as if you were a precious gem that he would never be willing to part with. And that's also why he had created the vision for you. He looked down at you with gentle eyes. Your vision had been sewn into a black leather glove that you rarely took off. Right now it was glowing with elemental energy, showing him just how overwhelmed with emotions you are right now. It had taken him longer than he wanted to admit. And he was about to ask, just to be completely sure, when he realized... No. Let's finish our stroll first. The sun had started to set when the two of you arrived at the waypoint. With one hand, you combed through your hair. The wind here was stronger, but not unpleasant. You and Zhong Li quietly watched as the sun touched the ocean at the horizon. Then he suddenly stepped away from you. A confused noise left your lips. Did you do something wrong? You were about to say something, but he was already returning. Something small and white in his hand. I was just making sure I haven't forgotten it. It was a glaze lily. A beautiful yet rare and expensive flower. Would you allow me? You made a confused noise when one of his hands softly brushed over your head as he gently placed the flower in your hair. You are so close now that his scent entered your nostrils. He smelled of tea leaves and exotic wine. Once the flower was safely placed on your head, he didn't take a step back, opting to just look at your beautiful face as he stared up at him, mouth halfway open, unable to speak. I had been wondering about your little mannerisms, he said with an amused smile. I simply have to ask, are you fond of me? You felt tears running down your face as you threw yourself against him. Words leaving your mouth, sputterings of a lovesick lunatic. But Zhong Li simply closed his eyes as warmth filled his entire being. It had been many years since the last time he had fallen in love. And even more years since the last time he had followed through with confessing his feelings. His arms softly caressed your back as you kept on muttering sweet nothings into his chest. It was admittedly very adorable. And finally you stopped, opting to simply press your body as far into him as you could until he took a step back. With one finger he pushed up your face by the chin forcing you to look into his, his beautiful yellow jade-colored eyes. For a split second, neither of you moved. And then, he closed the distance. His soft lips forcefully pressing onto yours like a befallen planet. His breath tickling down your neck as your lips parted allowing his long and soft tongue passage into your hungry mouth. Your knees felt like butter, as if you were about to fall, and your heart skipped a painful beat as you heard her moan into you. Slowly he pushed you up against the stone platform where the boy point was stationed on. There, pressed against the cooled stone, he pulled away, a thin line of salvia connecting both of your mouths. He smiled hungrily. Would you mind continuing this in my private quarters? He asked, entirely out of breath. 